Initially, when guide dogs first came on, she was not mobile at all. She would only sit still um, and only explored with what was in hard? hand's reach. She wasn't standing or moving or, or anything like that. The mobility through her through her trunk and shoulders and everything has increased, hasn't it? And what she hasn't done this week that she was always doing was hands and feet and just exploring, really touch with her feet or bottom. I guess it was a bit of a safety thing that she'd check everything out with her feet first and so go backwards she wasn't exploring forwards with her hands weekly basis I'm doing my uni full-time my internships with ABC 702 which is kind of like I'm sort of doing a producing slash reporting role but at the Australian I'm I guess just writing stories whenever I get in there it's like go up to the chief of staff ask him what he needs to be you know what he needs done and then I just make calls do interviews transcribe and I'm also producing um, one day a week um, for FBI radio which is um, I do the breakfast show and also reporting uh, one day a week for 2SER wow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I was born um, fine and then when I was six months old the blood vessels in the back of my eye burst and that tore the retina away from the eye and by the time I was two I think um, yeah I couldn't see anything I've always had guide dog instructors and Diane and I started working together two years ago. At the beginning of every semester she'll come to uni and show me where my new classrooms are, where the nearby sort of cafes were. When I first walked through Central I was, oh, I was completely nervous and it was horrible and I was like well how the hell am I going to do this for the next three years and now it's just like nothing like I feel you know confident and um, I guess I, I do feel safe and um, it means that I don't have to rely on other people as well which feels really nice. I can just jump on a bus and just get off somewhere and go for a walk and that's what people do all the time so you know in everyday life who who can who people who can see that's what they do. I'm always the kind of person who's like, who is like well 
Just because I can't see doesn't mean I, ca I can't do that. Guys, what we'll do to start with is we're going to scan them and see who's who. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me have a look. <laughs> Get off him. Get off him. <laughs> so I'm just going to check it is, make sure we have got you the right puppy. 91059787742. That's Oliver. I thought it was, but we just, we just, that's fine. Thanks, Lauren. Now, what have we got? Where's the boys? One boy's in here. He's over there doing a wee. Your very first collar. I'm, I'm excited. Well, just to be able to give back to the community something, um, you know, it's for people that need it. So obviously these dogs will be doing a great service for, for people um, who will really benefit from, from having these dogs in their lives. So it'll be nice to be a part of that. Straight on, straight on. Another five, ten metres to go. Ten to go, if that. Okay, turning left now. That's it, bearing to the right. Honey. That's it. Good girl. That's very clever. Lots of pats now, that makes them more likely to do it again. You know, that's her reward. Is it good? Is it good? You're beautiful, hey? Yes, you are. You're gorgeous. Oh, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh, you're so cute. Hey, are you gorgeous? We've been together two and a half years and she was the hardest thing that ever came into my life, but she was the most beautiful thing that has changed my life. She's changed it a thousand percent. I've been blind for 22 years as a result of a brain tumour, but you know, there's nothing else I can do. That's what happened and that's what life is. And so just get over it and get on with it. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't change it. Not yet anyway, not, maybe not in my lifetime, but next, you know, and you can't say that I'm an unhappy blind person when you hear or know of the things that I've done. You know, like sailing around the world for eight years, how fantastic is that? She's given me confidence, she's given me independence, she's just given me love, everything. She's so gorgeous. I just would not ever want to be without her. Never. Are you beautiful? Yes, you are. You're gorgeous. Now this is the, the prize of the house. This is Miss Zoe, she's my rag doll pet. And she's just like a guide dog to me because uh, she talks to me and she answers me. And uh, she leads me a lot in the house that, so I don't fall over her. And I, I just tell her, come on, you go straight to the kitchen or go to the bathroom and she walks off. And uh, no, this is her room. She goes there every night to sleep. But she has uh, full say of what happens here. I'm the caretaker. I'll get you to show me this uh, crossing properly. So I haven't had a good oh, look okay. at it, mister. Yeah, we'll do that as well. Yeah. Which way are we going, ma'am? Left. Left. We'll give it a warm up first. Oh, so I've got to get into my GPS, Fiction, have I? You've got GPS reception first. Oh, yeah. I think I was a bit negative the first day they put the phone in my hand. But yeah. Once I broke the ice with it, yeah, I love it. Love it, can't wait to get right to the end of it and make things easier. I want to keep moving around, I don't, I don't want to sit. 
See, my body's not that type of body. It's never, it's all been stretched and <laughs> pumped and paralysed and thrown around sort of thing. So, I, no, I don't want to sit uh, just idle. Now I'm very happy just doing what I do now. Take my mate out and my cane out and go exploring more places. On the ground, side to side, walking side to side, side to side. Oh, it's muddy, isn't it? Nice using the cane. Is that sloshy? It's slosh. <gasps> cane in front. Good boy. Basically, I've known Nate for the last three weeks. At the moment, we're just looking at canes because he's a bit scared in unfamiliar areas. Um, he's fine in his home area, very adventurous kid, but when he's in an unfamiliar area, area he clings on to mum. So that's what we're mainly working on at the moment. Um, it's going to take a while. <laughs> Nate, stand up. Like at the moment, he can see all the things on the ground. But as he gets a bit taller, he's not going to be able to see that as much. Look, I really want the cane to become a part of his life and him to use it to explore things and use it every day. Good boy. Good boy. We'll head back. Most of the time the cane was on the ground. <laughs> oh, that's good. Not up here, which is where it was, you know, last week. So whatever you've done is working really well. Oh, well. I'm glad he's using the cane. So when he needs it, he knows that you know, he can use that, so. Yeah. He'll get better. The training is always positive. It's based on repetition and reward. And no force is used in order to get the dog to learn. Good boy. And for me, particularly in my early days of training, that was really important to see. Uh, I was concerned, I, I suppose, that it might not be a great thing for the dog, that the dogs might suffer as a consequence of, of uh, working in this way. But what I discovered, and fairly quickly, was that it's just the opposite. Oh, good boy. Good boy. The, the work between a person, either a trainer or, or the uh, end user of the, of the dog, it's really about teamwork. Uh, the dog's not an automatum. Uh, you know, it, it's living, breathing, thinking animal. That relationship is the key really to the whole magic, if you like, of, of guide dogs. Up, up. Up, up, let's go. Well, bye. This is Susie. Sure, hold on a moment. Well, you know, I didn't think I was ever ready for a dog and I didn't know how I'd go looking after it. And I didn't know how it would go around here at work, having a dog in the workplace, how everyone would cope with it and whatever. And they love it just as much as I do. It, it is a hard, it's hard work, it's hard concentration. You've got to be dedicated. And, and because I did do it, We've rewarded each other. I've just got the best thing that's ever happened to me and likewise to her, she gets a good life. She has fun.
I take a dancing. This dog and I dance on the dance floor together. We don't lead a normal life. We're just too crazy. I was going to call her a person. And I know she's not going to be with me for the rest of my life. And I'm, there are going to be other dogs, but she's my first and she's just the most special, best thing that's ever happened in my life. He has um, two out of 60 in one eye and three out of 60 in the other eye. So basically what we see at 60 metres, he sees at two and three metres. Well, I thought I was going to be the king. <laughs> I thought I'd be the one having to sort of catch trains to work with them until they actually got used to how to get to work or, you know, that I'd be the one who'd have to catch a train with them until they found the new house and until they actually got used to that walk, you know, basically like counting steps or something until you get to your front door and knowing it that way then yeah, now I'm not the cane, they have their own, so yeah. Well I'm a lot more aware now and now I've got the help and now I can, you know, I take the training as well from Vanessa and I say alright, well come on Nate, we'll use your cane and things like that. So yeah, and I, don't, I guess life doesn't seem so scary when they get older. <laughs> yeah, I think I freak out when I think about them getting older and moving into their own units and I think, oh no, they can't, they have to stay with me, I have to protect them. So. But yeah, and that's what the cane's going to do, is give them the independence to be normal, you know, 30-year-olds out there living on their own. Yep, I'm grateful for that. moment we're trying to work on getting something together where we can keep toys in the same place that she will remember where they are and getting her but getting her up and playing rather than floor playing. I think she's progressing quite well you can see that she's what things she enjoys what things she doesn't um, and developing her own little characteristics of what makes her happy and yeah and, and playing and, and singing and being in the bath. She likes to play in the bath and play with water and, and explore in the water and that sort of thing, so yeah. And she likes being outdoors. She loves it when the wind blows in her face. She thinks it's hilarious. Being um, somewhere and just fi feeling the warmth of the sun. But she's nearly two, but she still seems like she's only one, <laughs> you know, like in the level of where she's progressed as far as mobility and that sort of thing. So I guess you've got to take more joy in the in the smaller things than you probably would with an, an everyday child. So, yeah. When, when I He's just a really boy. fun dog boy. to have around and he's chewed, you know, a few thongs but nothing too outrageous and when he was his very first day in the park when he was allowed after his vaccinations and running around and then this big black lab kind of frolicking with him and so anyway I was just kind of letting him go and then I was trying to see the owner of this big dog because he was um quite a big dog anyway we finally found him and he was also a guy <laughs> so his first time in the park and he tracked down one just like him destiny. it's his destiny the only thing I'm concerned of is giving him back at the end I like the idea of just keep like getting another one but um, I think I'm just gonna see how I feel when when I have to give him back
her 12 months that she's been up and mobile and she walks with her, with her hands out and just hopes for the best that there's nothing in the way. Um, and so, and if she falls down, she just picks herself up. She doesn't get distressed or anything. So, yeah. She's just doing so well. Things, but she's getting, uh, getting a lot more confidence and getting up and moving around and um, wanders around the place and, yeah, surprises us. She climbs things that you just don't think is possible. <laughs> yes, yeah, you do. Last year, last July, um, Ariana was diagnosed with having autism as well. So that's um, probably one of the biggest challenges, um, not just because of the blind, being blind, but a lot of the, um, the ways they deal with autism is all visual based. I guess you don't realise how much you rely on your sight for everything. I remember reading a quote once and it said, you know, something along the lines of, well, you can, you can laugh or you can cry and I choose to laugh because I can't stress over that what I can't change. And so all I can do is just, you know, make the best of the situations that you get handed to you. That's a good boy. One, let's have a look if that's the right one. Your loop, bring your hand out, pop it through there. That's it. All right, we need to take your animals back to your kindy. Can you take them back to your kindy classroom? Off you go. We'll meet you up there. Well done! Good boy. They're going to, so they're going to hide all those animals and what we have to do is we have to try to find them and bring them back to this box. Okay? Around the school. Alright? Up the stairs, Nate. So we chain. That's it. One step. Two steps. When he first pulled the cane out, he put it behind him. And um, I asked him why he held it behind him and he said he didn't want anyone to see. And um, when I went over to one of the other mums, I explained to her what had happened. And she turned around and said to him, oh, what a cool gravy, groovy cane you've got, Nate. Oh, that's such an excellent cane. So everyone's now starting to encourage the use of the cane. I think that positive feedback's helping him voice, I need my cane. And yeah, he's feeling a lot more comfortable using it. He's not embarrassed. It's just been at the right time for Nate. So someone you might even teach them at two and a half or three, but it also depends on their level of vision as well. So Nate's, I think, has gotten just a little bit worse than what it was yeah. maybe a year ago. It's a meaningful tool for him now, where before it probably wasn't yeah. so us as useful. And over here, he's starting with three other young boys, and they're hectic. I feel sorry for the teacher next year, because these four boys, when they get together, oh, they're just full on, they're climbing on the tables and everything. And Nate's absolutely no different to them, so I'm quite comfortable with him starting school. So. Okay, plenty of praise. Plenty of praise. Okay, well done. Sit down. Oliver, sit. Excellent work. Well done. Well done, buddy. Good boy. He obviously loves the work and, and knows the area well, so congratulations. It's a good, nice walk. When I first got the dog, it was nerve wracking. Um, but the honest thing is, I don't know why I waited so long. My life's become so much easier. Um, He's not just a guide dog, like, Oliver is a companion as well. He's a friend, so he's there when you're sad, when you're happy. Um, he's got such a personality on, on him. Well, Oliver's made me feel normal. I feel like a normal person. Uh, my confidence is sky high. 
Um, I believe I can do anything. <laughs> Put it this way, I'd be lost without Oliver now. I can't imagine life without him. But yeah, we've been together five years in October and she just turned six last January. I forget, I feel like we've been together for years. Years and years and years. She's just so much a part of me. She is my motivation to do anything and everything. She is my little human. It's funny. And you know, her and the cat still don't get on, but they are getting better. And I'll have her right till the end. Right to the very end. Because that's just how much I love her. And that's just because that's what she deserves. You know, they said at the beginning, um, we weren't, in hindsight, her and I weren't matched. You've got to be kidding that. We are one of the most perfect matches ever in personality and just anything. Without her, you know, it's be like you'd say without your child. Where would you be without your child? I couldn't have asked for a more perfect, better dog. And yet she's not perfect. She's nowhere near perfect, but then neither am I. So we're probably perfectly matched. We're never a dull moment in this house, are we, Howie? Hey? Eh? Give me a kiss. Kiss. Oh, beautiful. You're gorgeous, hey? Eh? Aren't you? You're very clever. See what dog does that? The, the cat certainly doesn't do that. <laughs> Sitting in a park